Today we're going to do five poetry questions in five minutes or less. I'm going to show you how to handle these questions where they ask you to respond with specific lines from the poem. All of these questions are formatted in a similar way. They're going to ask you which quotation from the poem most effectively illustrates the claim. And so we need to know what that claim is. Fortunately, the text they give us is really, really short. You'll see here that it gives a brief introduction to the poem. The Raven is a narrative poem by Edgar Allan Poe, written in 1845. And then we get the claim. In the poem, Poe alludes to a dead loved one and the author is teased by a talking raven. All we're looking for is a line from this poem that includes both of these concepts, that he mentions a dead loved one and that he's being teased by a raven. So let's take a look at our answer choices. We have, first of all, from my books, Surcease of Sorrow, Sorrow for the Lost Lenore. That might be the lost person that we're talking about, but I don't see anything about a raven. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind of penth, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Now that sounds like the right answer. We mentioned the lost Lenore, but we also got the raven in there. So we have both parts of the claim that the question is asking about. B is your best answer. Our second question says, which quotation from Ozymandias most effectively illustrates the claim? And we can just read that second line in the paragraph. Shelley wrote the poem after hearing news from English explorers after their return from Egypt. So we're looking for something from the poem that supports this idea that some explorers had come back and told a story and that's what he based this poem on. The first one says, I met a traveler from an antique land who said two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Uh, that seems like the perfect answer to me. It's literally telling us about travelers, which is the English explorers, right? And it says an antique land in the desert. We could infer that that would be Egypt. So A is our best answer. Okay, we got the road not taken. What's the claim that we're looking for? It says some literary analysts posit that the poem implies that the choices we make do not really matter. The A says two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler long I stood. I don't think this really supports the idea that it doesn't matter because he felt bad that he could not take both roads, so that it did matter. Uh, B says, then took the other as just as fair, and perhaps leaving the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Um, he says that it has a better claim, like maybe one road was better than the other, so I'm not sure that this supports the idea that the choice doesn't matter. C says, oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I think this might be the right answer because he says, first of all, that you can keep the road for another day. Like you could always do the other thing later. And then also saying that way leads on to way, I doubted if I'd ever come back. Almost like saying like, well, if you take this one way, it might end up in the other way anyway. So you might never need to come back and deal with this choice again. Like it almost suggests that it doesn't matter because one way will take you to the other way eventually. If we want to confirm it, we can look at D, which says, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. So that one clearly doesn't support the claim. That leaves us with C, that's our best answer. Which quotation from the chimney sweeper most effectively illustrates the claim? The claim that we've got here is that William Blake was critical of the industrialization of cities and wanted to highlight the suffering children faced as chimney sweepers. So we're just gonna look for a quotation that supports the idea of suffering children. The first one says, there's little Tom Dacker who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved. So I said, um, I mean, he got his hair cut. Seems like he was sad about it, but I don't think that's too bad for the children. Uh, let's look at B. Thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. That sounds pretty bad. That sounds like dead kids, uh, coffins, and children. That's not a good combo. I'm thinking that B is gonna be our best answer here. Our last poem from this set is the poem Harlem, and we're looking for the claim here that says, how Langston suggests that the oppression of African Americans will eventually have harmful consequences for society at large. It's actually a really, really short poem, so it's pretty easy to go through all of the options here. Let's take a look at our answer choices. The first one says, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? That just sort of poses a question about maybe whether the dream would just disappear. Uh, or fester like a sore and then run. Kind of suggesting that, you know, it'd be painful and long-term problems. Maybe that's our answer. Does it stink like rotten meat? Well, okay, yeah, it would smell bad, but I don't know about problems for society there. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? I think that last one sort of gives us a clear answer, right? Like explosion would imply that there will be violence or there will be problems if this dream continues to be deferred, 
which is essentially the idea that the American dream is being deferred for African American people who are not given the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. D would be your best answer. And I find these much easier than the typical main idea questions where we have to interpret the whole poem. In these cases, we just have to look for lines that match with the key concepts in the claim. So as soon as you see a question like this, just go straight to the paragraph, figure out what the claim is, and then look for an answer that best matches that, and you'll be on your way to a better score.